fast fashion. First coined in a 1990 New York Times article, this term has since been brought up to refer to the rapid production of inexpensive clothing governed by the latest trends. As demands for more clothes grew, mass production soon followed. Retailers began adopting strategies to distribute these poorly made garments to the world. In recent years, the production scale has only grown bigger. In 2015, a study found that companies were manufacturing double the amount of clothes they produced in 2000. Simultaneously, the average consumer was buying 60% more clothes than 15 years ago, while fabric quality continued to worsen. During the pandemic, the fast fashion industry escalated to unprecedented heights, drawing customers from malls and stores to the convenient sphere of e-commerce. Over the past couple of years, Shein has slowly dominated the fast fashion market. They showed a notable increase in sales in 2022 that led them to officially take over 50% of the entire industry later that same year. The fast fashion giant can attribute these growing profits to their online marketing tactics. It's easy, it's accessible, it's quick. So for consumers that have just become used to this almost, you know, instantaneous shipping, free shipping, all of those things, it's really easy to get a hold of so they don't see any reason uh, to, to change that. In a year, 100 billion new garments are created, along with 17 million tons of clothing being thrown away by Americans. Textile waste refers to the material that is left over and thrown away after the garment manufacturing process. When textiles are discarded, around 66% are sent to landfills where they can take centuries to decompose. Satellite images have identified a pile of discarded clothing in Chile, sent there from Europe, Asia, and America, and it is so large it can be seen from space. The numbers around the amount of clothing that is thrown away have just grown astronomically. It's the fastest growing part of our waste stream in the United States. It's something like 14 million tons a year of clothing that we're throwing away. And most people don't know much about it, um, and we want to make sure people are more aware and that we're doing more to slow it down and stop it. However, fast fashion's environmental impact extends beyond landfills. It ranks as the second largest consumer industry of water in the world, as the production of a single shirt or pair of jeans can use 700 to 2,000 gallons of water. When faced with the problem of unwanted clothing, people often resort to the simple solution of donating their clothes to charity. However, the system of donating is not as effective nor sustainable as many may have been led to believe. When it comes to donating to larger donation centers, such as Goodwill, Salvation Army, or even a lot of um, the chain thrift stores, a very, very small percentage of what you donate actually ends up on the sales floor. A majority of it gets sent away to the Global South or to different areas in Africa where the West is basically using that area as its own landfill. The primary root of fast fashion's controversy is in its materials that can contaminate the environment when discarded. Most articles of fast fashion are composed of synthetic fibers, which are manufactured from non-renewable resources like coal, oil, or natural gas. This means that if the clothes were to end up in a landfill, the fibers wouldn't be able to decompose and the surrounding ecosystems would be affected by the toxins in the fabric. Unfortunately, even natural fibers aren't safe once they end up in landfills, as this prompts them to produce methane, which is four times more potent than carbon dioxide. Greenwashing occurs when a company creates an impression that its products and agenda are taking steps to be more environmentally friendly. Companies may use vague labels or marketing tactics, which lead to consumers making choices based on misinformation. As consumers, though, our standards should be made from 100% recycled materials and not made from recyclable materials. There is a vast difference. With about 75 million factory workers worldwide, shockingly less than 2% of them receive a living wage. Most garment workers, predominantly situated in countries like Vietnam, India, and Bangladesh, experience exploitation and harsh working conditions. In fast fashion, a lot of times you see, you know, when you see shirts for $5 and you think, oh, you know, H&M is making a portion of that, they're shipping it from somewhere else, so how much are those people getting paid? Through regulation and standards, governments hold the absolute power to combat overproduction and overconsumption. While it is important that the average person take their own conscious measures to reduce their fast fashion footprint, systemic change is inevitably the only way to take down this monstrosity of an industry phenomenon. Currently in California, Senate Bill 707, called the Responsible Textile Recovery Act, which is still in progress, 
offers a way to keep tabs on garments through a federally funded recycling program. For this bill, um, it will require that all producers of uh, fashion articles and textile articles that are selling into the state of California um, fund a um, collection infrastructure and recycling of the material that they collect. Educating oneself about the life cycle of clothing, being aware of the purchases you make, and finding ways to reuse or preserve garments are practical steps towards a more sustainable fashion future. So, in the next 20 years, we would like to see fast fashion go out of fashion. Or at least, slow down a bit.